Eclipsa, Queen of Darkness, easily the most mysterious character in Star vs. the Forces of Evil as of this time. She is not who she says or seems to be, and we will be exploring a theory about who exactly Eclipsa is, what her motivations are, and what she is going to do next in Star vs. the Forces of Evil. Also, today is the solar eclipse in the United States, so why not bring this out? I hope you guys enjoy, and let's get straight to it with the tapestry. Oh. Eclipsa, queen of Muni, to a Muman king was wed, but took a monster for her love, and away from Muni fled. Ooh, that girl. There are two things I find really interesting with the tapestry. Eclipsa is called the queen of darkness. We'll go with that first. So, we all know that Eclipsa was crystallized by Rhombolus, or was ordered to be crystallized by Rhombolus, but we do not know as to why that is. When I hear the words Queen of Darkness, it makes me think Eclipsa is really more than what she looks to be. She must have done something that would have set off the Munian people, or something that could have caused harm to the whole people around her. We don't know for sure, and that's something we'll find out, but those are my thoughts on that. Secondly, she left with a monster, the one she married, and she fled from Yumi. Now as we all know, the Mumins never got along with the monsters, they're actually at each other's throat. So apparently, if Eclipsa married a monster, that would be impossible to the Mumins. To see that monster love, as they say. Star is nowhere near your skill level at her age. She's far beyond it. In fact, I haven't seen anything like this since Queen Eclipsa. Monster love. <gasps> it is no surprise that it would be crazy to the Mumins for someone, even like their queen, Eclipsa, to marry a monster. And here are some of my thoughts on this. Eclipsa, in one clip, she has mentioned that she also has lost her parents. I don't know if this could be a truth or not, but let's say theoretically if it did happen, if Eclipsa was around Moon's age, and lost her parents. Then, theoretically, let's say the killer was a Mumin, and Eclipsa might have had the view that Mumins were bad, or they weren't as what she thought them to be. And maybe that allowed her to come to the sense that maybe she could try to get along with the monsters. I don't know, it's just crazy thinking, but you never know. Eclipsa is really different from all the others. And not only that, she has some pretty crazy spells too, like the all-seeing eye spying spell. What would a normal person need that for? I don't think a normal person would need that for. I think Eclipsa had some ideas and she has seen some many things in her life. Think about it, even a spell to kill an immortal? Eclipsa must have had some reasoning to develop these spells or learn them. There must have been more to the story than what meets the eye and what we really can see. How long have I been here? Uh, like 300 years? <coughs> 300 years. What could have Eclipsa done, especially as a queen, to where they had to freeze her in a crystal? and keep her there for 300 years. It's, it's just like, what insane thing could she have possibly done that we, the viewers, do not even know yet? It, I, honestly, I have to say, it has to do something with her monster love, and maybe she worked with monsters together. I do not know, but that's crazy to the humans, and that's just a thought I have. But apparently, she was the queen of darkness, and with such evil spells, I can see why she would have to be crystallized. She's not a safe person for the people, and to say the least, it would be very dangerous to have her even outside the crystal right now, and I can see why they would want to keep her crystallized. 
And another thing, she did seem phased really. For the response of being crystallized for 300 years. She's like, yeah, okay, and continues to eat her chocolate. Like, dang, what's with this woman? So she has some abstract personality and definitely is not somebody to underestimate. I see. I lost my mother too, and I was not much older than you. Ever since, Mom, um, since I became queen, everybody's been looking to me to end the war and make all these big decisions, but I'm just a kid. I can't decide the fate of Muni. I can't even decide which boy I like. I know how you feel. But that's not why I'm here. I need you to teach me one of the spells from your forbidden chapter. Forbidden? Is that what they're calling my chapter? Yeah, sorry, I didn't name it. This is really the first direct counter Moon has with Eclipsa, and really lets us know who Eclipsa seems to be at first. In first sight, I thought this was, hey, this person seems n normal, why was she crystallized? And she doesn't take a liking to when her book, her chapter in specific was called Forbidden. And much less to that, she didn't really seem like an evil person overall. She seemed perfectly normal and was able to understand Moon. And they both had something in common that their parents have died. And so, to me, looking at her, Clipsa does have a good side to her. I feel as if that is true. But I also feel as if she is pretty much evil in a sense too. Look at her hands, and you could tell she's been doing a lot of dark magic. It's crazy, as if why she would need to wear the gloves. Because she wanted to conceal what happened to her skin, probably, as a result of that dark magic. That's just my thoughts on this. Let's keep taking on a further look and analyze this. Are you sure that's what you want? It's my only hope. Well, the spell you seek requires a magical contract. I can give it to you, but once your enemy is killed, you must give me something in return. Okay, what do you want? My freedom. What? Oh, I know, it's a lot to ask, but I've just been here so long, all by myself. I want to buy my own chocolate, or those little shrink wrap muffins at the bottom. Nah, -uh, you don't. You don't want to buy chocolate. And I don't know. I feel as if this is very manipulative of Eclipsa. I feel like hearing this, my thoughts changed on her immediately. I thought she has different goals. She she wants to be free for something else. I feel as if Eclipsa, what her real goal is immediately upon being free, is to find the monster she wed first. I think that's her first goal. But other than that. We can't really tell what her motives are, but they probably aren't good. Considering the fact that she even was crystallized, that kind of gives me a sense that maybe something's going on here that we, the viewers, don't even know. But, as said, Eclipsa, she seems very manipulative, and Moon totally falls for it. They have to make a contract for a certain spell, and I don't know if you actually necessarily have to, but in order for Eclipse to become free, I think that's what Eclipse really wanted to do. And honestly, I could see why it's important for her, because she's been stuck in there and she needs to get out to complete whatever method or goal she has. And without Moon being there, there's no way she can. So Eclipse, uh, I wouldn't take my eyes off her for a moment if I were you, because she said her freedom will be gained once the enemy is destroyed. So that would refer to Moon's enemy, Toffee, otherwise known as the Lizard. And knowing at the end of the Battle of Muni, the crystal cracked when Toffee was destroyed, but it did not fracture completely. Which means, is Toffee really gone? I do not know, but my thoughts are, there's more to this that we have to see, and we'll have to wait for it. But these are Rumbulus's crystals. I can't free you. A contract between two queens is stronger than any crystal. 
Now, do you want to learn the spell? Come close. Now, this is what you need. And aim it directly at his heart. So Moon accepts his contract, but what I find really interesting is how does Eclipsa know that a contract between two queens is more powerful than any crystal? I don't know how she could have gotten that knowledge, and it's possible that she might have once made a prior contract with another queen within her time. Maybe possibly with her mother? I don't know, but we know her mother was dead. But I just don't understand how she would come to have this knowledge. But then again, Moon accepts this contract and the deal is made. And as we do find out later in the Battle of Muni, the contract is pretty much true. It is more powerful to, than even Domblis's crystals and I'm really curious to see where this heads on now. Thank you guys for listening to my thoughts and theories on Eclipsa. I know it's long and hard, but these are what I think, and I, I am really curious to see what happens in the future with Eclipsa between Star, Marco, and all of them. I know she has other motivations than chocolate, and it's something to keep in mind when you're watching the rest of Season 3 as it comes out in November. I was Alex, and thank you guys for coming. Y'all take care.